Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for permission to make a personal statement regarding my supplementary questions on the ownership of parliamentary videos on the 7th of November 2017. In my SQ on parliamentary video footage on the 7th of November, uh, I asked for, uh, uh, when asked for specific examples of editing, I said, and I quote, there was a specific example where a clip was put up in relation to the Presidential Election Act debates. If my memory serves me well, it was in January or February, and the clip that was put up of certain exchanges, there were certain bits removed. It was actually communicated with MediaCorp, and through the correspondence, they actually made the rectification and put up a different clip. So I think that was resolved quite amicably, unquote. When I was asked to clarify my remarks later in that day, I acknowledged that I could have recalled certain facts incorrectly about an exchange with MediaCorp that had occurred in February 2017, nine months earlier. I said that I would need to verify the facts with my email archive, but that, and I quote, I am sure that will be the case when I have verified, so I am quite prepared to accept that fact, unquote. I would now like to definitively withdraw my earlier statements to the effect that the video had been edited with certain bits removed and that the video had been edited and only corrected after my intervention. I confirmed that MediaCorp had explained this to me in February 2017 and that I had accepted that. I would like to apologize to the House for all incorrect recollections of the chain of events in February 2017 contained in this exchange as per House conventions. However, Mr. Speaker, sir, I did not deliberately misrepresent the facts of that incident to this House. Firstly, I did not plan to raise this incident during supplementary questions. I did so off the cuff and only in response to the request to enumerate any incidents of editing that I knew of. As it turned out, my memory of the incident was inaccurate. Secondly, I did acknowledge that my memory of the incident may well be imperfect as I prefaced it with the phrase, quote, if my memory serves me well, unquote. Thirdly, I stated explicitly and twice on that day that the incident had been resolved amicably and had not accused MediaCorp of partisan editing of a video clip in that incident, which makes the matter of when the clip was corrected immaterial. I would also like to reiterate that the main thrust of my PQ and SQs had been, firstly, the nature and ownership of parliamentary video footage, which was clarified as a result of the PQ, Secondly, whether and how videos are edited, which was also clarified by that PQ in that there is editing insofar as that means the arrangement of parliamentary exchanges into clips, et cetera, but not verbatim editing of an exchange within a particular clip. And thirdly, why live streaming of parliament is not provided, an issue where SMSG explained the government's position, which is one with which I disagree, since live streaming would tend to remove any concern about the reflectiveness of clips of particular exchanges uploaded sometime after the event. Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, in conclusion, I apologize to the House for any mistaken impression created by my failure of memory. I agree that parliamentary privilege is a privilege that should never be taken lightly. However, I did not deliberately misrepresent facts or deliberately mislead the House for whatever reason. Thank you. Uh, a leader of the House. Mr. Deputy Speaker. Allow me to clarify with member Mr. Leon Pereira on his personal uh, explanation. Notwithstanding his intention, whether he's deliberately, deliberately misleading the House or otherwise, does he agree that he has indeed made the wrong allegations against Mediacom? I thank the Leader of the House for her clarification, uh, and uh, I certainly agree that uh, my recollections were imperfect. It had not been my intention to allege that MediaCorp had undertaken partisan editing of that clip. Uh, having said that, I think the, the statements that I made contain inaccuracies. I have uh, withdrawn them, and I acknowledge that. And would he also agree that the allegations that were untrue has indeed misled the House? Thank you again. Uh, I do agree that uh, the statements were inaccurate and therefore 
misled the House, but I, it was not my intention to make an allegation against Mediacorp of having done partisan editing to that clip. As I've said earlier on, in his intention, putting aside, the fact is that the member has indeed made untrue allegations, and I thank him for acknowledging his uh, misleading uh, statements and also acknowledging uh, his apology to the Parliament. Uh, Deputy Speaker, I'd like to stress here that MPs are given parliamentary privilege to speak freely and surface different views, but this must not be misused to risk misrepresent facts or mislead Parliament. I'm glad that Mr Pereira has clarified his statement by withdrawing his false allegations against Mediacorp and apologising to Parliament. Mr Pereira has indeed acknowledged that he has missed a mistake in recollecting his facts. I would not want to read too much of into his intention, whether there was intent, indeed um, deliberate allegation against Mediacorp, but statements that were wrongly made in this House deserve it to be retracted if it's indeed untrue at, in this House, so that the Chamber, the members, are able to benefit from the discussion and also to restore trust on each other's statements made in this House. It is only in that way that we are able to have a useful and effective discussion in this House because we believe that what we say here, we have serious basis for them and that we will not make any statements <coughs> unless we are very scrupulous with the facts that's fact backing the statements. So I hope this serves as a timely reminder for all members of the House of the high standards of integrity and honesty that we expect in this House. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.